got the great pleasure now to introduce our two next speakers, Barry Schwabsky and Sean Bonney. Barry Schwabsky is an American poet living in London, as well as the art critic for the nation. Among his many poetry publications are Opera, poems 1981 to 2002, as well as Book Left Open in the Rain from 2009. He's also the author of many works of art criticism, including The Widening Circle, Consequences of Modernism in Contemporary Art from 1997, and Barry will perform tonight together with Sean Bonney. Bonney's poetry combines formal experiment with a direct as well as sarcastic voice drawing on the manic chatter of London's secret streets. His new book document from 2009 charts a course from the London suicide bombing, uh, actually through Tony Blair's resignation. Previous publication of Bonney include Baudelaire in English from 2008 and Blade Pitch Control Unit from 2005. A very, very warm welcome to Barry Schwabsky and Sean Bonney. Hi. Bit of a nip in the air. Allow me to disrobe. Um, since we're here in an art space, I thought I would start out with a, a poem that's something about about art. It's uh, kind of about drawing a portrait. It's called Letter O. Before describing a simple oval, introduce the source of highest light or deepest shadow of the object on which it falls. The neck, in previous light, will be clearly a certain quantity of reflected individual feeling passing into shadow. Line is really to express the hardness or softness between cast shadows and surfaces of simple objects and perturbing features. Illustrations to a book on a hard, bony structure must be felt for in a mass of curls. It is the stress characteristic of the sitter you must show that projects slightly like two shutters over the eyes. The lips should fit into corners between essential structure and plumpness. If you examine a more softly modeled nature, you should create illusion beneath the garments of your knowledge. Vibration is fatal, a direct current passing down to your hand and must not be interrupted. Your mind is not fresh, it is waste that your hands be moist or sticky while you are so much India rubber. The light falls and should reveal one source of sky, the eyes looking toward us. Now select your darks. The lips search for subtle modeling underneath the eyes. Round the mouth before pronouncing a little vision. Silent plea, nine. Notice the way I notice you, the way my mouth would notice the nape of your neck unseen. Sit down with me before disappearing, please. While red light darkens, draw me to your broken surface. Have you ever held the wrong breath? The moon tilts against our not yet understanding. Turn that star down a notch. Now work your way toward what difference what you want to feel, toward your beds of wildflowers again, toward your breath of grass ago. But watch what you wish for. Is it all over my face? Then keep shining my moon. Immigrant. Certain days I used to think of leaving the East Country, now not even a darting memory, just a hole in the sky before which grain elevators hang, nailed. I drank wine of immoral bouquet, sea foam, midday drizzle, ash of poppies, copperas, mustard. Then I stopped arriving, and the eye burn stopped happening. Still the blind sky stands out anonymous with birds of raw meat. Breath changes color. I call the window closer, but it won't come. The eye yaws, flooded with dreams of targets and insomniac sheets. A funeral with interruptions. Organ, shut up, sing the birds, before the stony minute turns its face the other way round. Uh, the next few poems are going to be from, from a project that I've been working on lately, which involves uh, asking other poets to give me their 
uh, their failed or abandoned poems uh, for me to work on. Uh, and uh, each, each one is called poem. Uh, and the first one will be a sort of maybe kind of preview of one of the people who's reading uh, a, little, a little later this evening. Poem after Richard Hell. You know this has all been done before in the age of monster trucks when shapes were as close as the objects of love and their shadows would genuflect as they backed off. You know this has all been done as a formal reduction with respect to the limits of the picture plane. It's unassuming spirit, inherently graceful, and I take pleasure, however cheaply, in it. Poem after Casey Muhammad. When a man has his tent ropes severed in sleep, so curling up on the cold earth to rest, the future is, is his only possible voice, the brief and fretted dream in which, arrested for treason, having conspired to seize so many stars, he was presently silent and slept in his secrets. But what, may I ask, ever happened to the sleep he was buried in? Was it not until evening? He heard your highness's calls to account. He preached to Britain its manifest density. Working upon their fears, he persuaded them that the accusation against Lord Russell was true. Soon the letters swarmed across the page like ants at a picnic. The Duke himself told them they were mistaken, but up he appeared at Westminster Hall. Stars swarmed across the sky that night. My king, he then died cheerfully in faith, passed gratefully into restfulness too. Though the poem grew so long, sleep came upon him, copying scrolls amidst so many popping flashbulbs. What else can I say of his dreaming end? He took his pipe out of his mouth, went to sleep, his dream a stipend from some future time, and when the latter is said to be hard, lost his head and drank the warm milk that the north shall come, and he was told not to fear, for there was never any present tense. O oh, heart, of this love be the slave, fine sheets, how soft, how smooth. And after that, the music, unless we try to stop it, there is no turning back until a man of skin. But look to the star that was written in an age when sleep could make you happy, to stay in that island where they had landed, the falcon all the while rubbing its wings. Poem after Louise Mathias. The isn't division. Work ethic of hollyhocks, Indolent, redolent, counts as similar to this yard. Ah, the smell of you is all you ever were. Girl biting her way into a story, biting her way through her soft yellow voice to save what's worth saving. Bottom, lip, blood, red, sullied, under clouds of paper. Any night coming, I'll feel you up and right through that door. Poem after Tim Atkins and also after Petrarch. How many breathless at the tiny golden flecks, like sunlight sticking onto my back and tongue, finding love at the bottom of a bag of personally pan-fried parmesan and potato chips, and fraught with eyes wetting the grass. The sun made me hazy, knowing nothing of women except in this poem, and contented with shady places, death once removed, fleeing all others, myself too. This woman alive showing in that view of me the limestone flower, she always comes before me, a man befriended by KFC boneless, even on high holy days, a lover by name at least, nothing less. And, uh, and then just some other uh, new poems that as far as I know aren't based on anybody else's abandoned poems. Falling asleep at the movies. Rain filled the 20th century, a piano burning, and in the foreground, the radio set, the suicide cart, set some light in tatters. Not as much fun for God, but at least you can't squint at it. The wrecker of cities flew in on waves of pictures and noticed air molecules wandering. You know how those telephone poets coo. You said their names have no destination. And what is this strange sky we filled with armies of fireflies? A calm death. Unlock my body. Feed sleep some bitter fruit. Let noon fix a seal of wax upon my head. The eye wanders. Some call it homeless. 
A voice hears you from mysterious places. The sun, a scratched lens, keeps leaning toward laughter, dropping crumbs of memory. The birds devour them. And the last one is called uh, Endless Remake. Our love is unanimous, like a piece of rotten prose on the table, like some wild ass dove. Our love is hateful and devoured, never mind the change. As fast as cash, it helps keep your eyes closed, and then a picture catches sight of me, and I am afraid of it. To keep scaring the night, just look at our invincible distance. Is resistance its own reward? Stasis is as fast as we can go, and it sure is faster than cars. Our images slink away. Oops, this link appears to be broken. Our glamour can't survive here. I'll look without knowing just who is looking, or else I'll be buried in a modernist coffin of luminous black, accompanied only by a young and unlined notebook. I think it's a girl. Our raging spirits, our love against the wind. Is a sparrowhawk apolitical? Does its creaking tear, tear the sun? Abandon it. Smash its voice on the rocks we took for monuments and bring me its lonesome sound in a jar. Our face dancing leaves no record. Bury the sun in your chignon. Present your arms to me, an excess of one, nascent with excited light, bent down in the gist of spring. The silence of a painting is not accidental. And now, Sean Bonney. Hello. I'm going to read from a long sequence which I've nearly finished. Um, it's kind of a narrative poem called The Commons. And at this point in the sequence, all the voices in it, uh, they've taken refuge in the DSS office uh, following a major zombie attack that has not taken out most of East London. We are Elizabeth Windsor, controlled by a centrifugal motor shaft. Sorry, I mean, I have eaten the taxes you were saving for, and then I ate the slaves. Sorry, I mean, my hips were wriggling. The rest of this letter has been returned to you. It is offensive and inappropriate. Controlled by a... Sorry, even if I am shot dead, we will remember these moments. So delicious, for example. So... Hello, O oh burnt frequency. Where my eyes were without a city wall, I have been designing a new geography of delight, clean and troubled like a baby's cry. Flap your knees apart, my insipid drunks, my shuffling laws inside the jerking, melting bellies of detectives and diagrams, such irritating spheres. Get up now, dead man. Have your say, O oh, disappeared, or non-existent elements, or our bodies are still here, burning globes eclipsed. Oh shit, I just ate the economy, that's right. It was a thin metal revolving, so stupid and dying like a businessman, squealing like the rats that were left on our doorstep this morning. That's right, now we know we are geometric gaps in police lines, so tender, so... Every morning I take a pill, stops electricity, stops most things. So imagine you're a, like, nice person. Some shuffling guy bites you. It's music everywhere. Communism, dole scrounges. But we go there for money. Everything is shimmering. The gaps in your voice. Smoke of the bottomless pit. Idiots on sulfur. Oh, bollocks. There goes Thatcher again. Think of a sound. Stretch it. Extract the eye. Extract virtually everyone. You, my enemy, phenytoin sodium, controls all warped reels. Gaps in the royal alphabet, like fun people. Their gravity is perfect. No distortion. A voice slipped through mine. A tone control, silent and fearsome, extracts each decade at playback. Requires no adjustment. A voice forks into mine, clearly heard, coarse and distorted. the wide avenues of Baghdad. An attic room sealed from the outside. A pronoun cluster incinerated by dogs. A bitter sky on a sober landscape. Regrets are stupid, and exile is a matter of degree, a matter of harmony or hierarchy like everything else, and as arbitrary. 
like a flight of scarlet pigeons or a few wild nights where your thick skull like really lost it. A graceless trepanation in the soft earth, the collapse and realization of all literature. But what is the accumulation of human knowledge compared to our corporate stupor? In a volcanic landscape, we were fed to mercenaries. In a house in the country, we heard the tricks of digestion. In an alley in Paris, we learned all human history, constantly speaking of our mythical entry to the world's cities. On a diet of medieval bread, we became businessmen, conductors, the entire universe. But that's only true from the perspective of one or two outdated formulae. In terms of a different set of harmonics, this could be anywhere, Haymarket or Kabul. And we could be pigs. It ends in petrol, rags and ice. London, 1873. Meanwhile, back in British poetry, dutiful saline monarchy, like voice it, here's a burnt person ringing, puking out its decades, its fenatoan pit. Sorry, but it's not my fucking landscape, my sweet non-cognitive pal. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, functions careering most things. Cars, heads, oh, you, cough. Finance recommends speaking pills. Someone's city in pretty flames, cough. Birds, nice sanction, nice decade. So what? I wasn't talking for you, O oh Functions. This is how we speak to our fathers, with lawful description. They are audible persons. Listen, this is what they taught me. Here are decades, rats that snarl in clear and ancient taxes, simple familiar sentiments, oh scroungers, oh gasoline. There's a home for you here. There's a room for your things. Me, I like pills, oh hell. This book has been specially in clear, non-technical hordes of palaces, empty tone controls, a lawful you inside your word for gasoline, peaks in high-frequency gusts, bright magnetic scroungers, and the bottomless landlord viewed from 15 millivolts, bright slogans of ancient anaglyphs, bright wow and flutter. I said non-technical, inaudible to all with lawful hearing, my silent, boring dancing, oh my, my bare ass flashing. Move along, fun people. Nothing to see here. Cheers. <laughs>